About 200 yards more, he guessed, and he'd be at the spot. Snow-splattered ridges gleamed in the distance. He felt he could remember every rock, every root of the ledge. Should he stop a while and get his nerve up, catch his breath? He kept going, making his way around the next bend. The wind was soundless, sweeping the sun-filled sky. And suddenly, there it was. Sooner than he had thought, the span of safety on his left gave way entirely, and he was face to face with the fear place. Even the cougar stopped, lifted her head, and sniffed the air. She looked down over the edge, then back, as if to see if Doug were coming. I can't. A swell of fear engulfed him, and for a moment the trees far below seemed to come up to meet him clinging tightly to a scrubby bush growing out of the face of the rock. Doug stared without blinking at the ledge stretching before him, even narrower than he remembered. Was this possible? Could it have eroded to twenty inches in places? There was nothing separating him from the edge of the cliff and a plunge downward. There were even places that the ledge tipped slightly toward the yawning gap, places where loose rocks and stones lay ready to trip him, make him skid. He could smell the difference in the air here above the canyon, sharp and moist. It beckoned him downward, and each breeze seemed to punch him in the stomach, shoot upward, sucking him again beneath the chin. Far below him, the rocky floor of the canyon waited. He could see the tops of the trees, a meandering stream, boulders. He wondered how long it would take his body to reach the bottom, how it would feel to... No! Immobile, Doug swallowed and tried to get a grip on his fear. His mouth felt as though it were lined with dust. He attempted to measure the length of the ledge with his eyes, the length of the place where his heart stopped pumping and his legs wouldn't move. That place. About nine yards to the curve and a few yards more after that, if he remembered right. It didn't seem so long when he thought about it. But looking out there now, it seemed impossible. Maybe there were times it paid to be cautious. Maybe there were places that only fools would tread. Hadn't his mother said something like that once? Or was it where angels fear to tread? If there was such a place, this was it. Would he ever make Eagle Scout if he couldn't try something like this? Would he even live to make Eagle Scout if he did? One slip of the foot and... Stop it, his other self, as though he never took any other kinds of risks, riding his bike at top speed around corners, for example. Look at the ledge, he told himself, and see if you could make it without falling off, if it was drawn on the sidewalk with chalk. Sure, no problem. Could he do it if it were only half as wide, drawn with chalk on the sidewalk? Of course. A fourth as wide, even. Give him a path on the sidewalk five inches wide, marked with chalk, and he could go for a mile, never stepping outside the boundaries once. Okay, then. He had twenty inches minimum. Do it, he told himself. It was the cougar who showed him how. The cat simply walked out on the ledge, hugging the side of the mountain, but not too closely not leaning inward as Doug tended to do. As he followed, and as he thought about it, Doug realized that were his body at an angle and he slipped, his feet would be pointing toward the edge of the cliff. He needed to keep upright. He would remember that chalk line on the sidewalk. It wasn't so bad at first. The ledge varied in width between three and three and a half feet. Three feet is a yardstick, he told himself. Three feet is the width of a kitchen table, the width of a cot. Probably wider here than his sleeping bag. 
Yet he lay on top of it on hot summer nights and never rolled off, not even in his sleep. He could do this. Piece of cake. He swallowed. Ahead, the cougar's left hind foot seemed to displace a small stone at the side of the path, and it rolled over the edge. Doug heard it hit a rock below, then another. The cougar glanced toward the gorge and kept going, ears up. The path was narrowing now, and somewhere ahead was the curve where it was narrowest of all, where he couldn't see what he was getting to. Somewhere, right on the bend, was the place he had flattened himself against the rock. I can't. The word seemed to be building up already in his throat. He felt the needle pricks in the palms of his hands again and in the soles of his feet, felt the tightening of his body, the rigidity of his chest, as though, if he tensed himself enough, he might be too stiff or too hard or too impenetrable to topple. Ahead, the cougar's body swayed with every motion, limbs sleek and relaxed. She took the curves as easily as a tire rolling along on its own momentum. She didn't walk carelessly, but in a deliberate, rhythmical manner, joints loose, paws secure. As he approached the curve, Doug took a deep, shaky breath and let it out. Then another. He looked down at his feet and blew upward to fan his face. His right bootlace was untied, the ends dangling. He would not try to tie it here, bend over here, and he might lose his balance altogether. He would have to go around the bend, dragging that lace. Hollow-eyed with terror, his mouth dry, he began to maneuver himself around the narrow, narrow curve, watching each step to see where his foot would go next, scanning the wall of rock to see what his hand could clutch. He would not allow himself to look down at the canyon, would not let himself even glance at the large birds that were circling, soaring, just off in the huge space to his left. The cougar had gone on, probably so far ahead Doug would find it sitting beside Gordy's tent. Remember Dad on the raft, he said aloud, his voice trembling. He tried to remember the day Dad had told him about, when he was sure the sun would kill them all, broil them there in the open sea. They had seen a rowboat and paddled toward it, and when they got there, it had four men in it, all refugees like themselves, and all of them dead. Was this as bad as that? Then, answering his own question, he said aloud, No. He lied. It was worse. He was still moving forward, had decided not to face the wall and walk sideways for fear his repositioning himself might be more dangerous than walking straight. But just as he rounded the narrowest spot on the ledge, he came face to face with the cougar. His strength almost gave way. Was this it, then? He had come all this way to face a cougar who wanted to turn around and go back? Who would nudge him backward, step over step, possibly pushing between him and the cliff wall, sending him over the edge? Their eyes were on each other, fixed solidly on each other for the first time. Ch Charlie, Doug said, I can't get by. You've got to move. The cat came on. So close her muzzle was almost against Doug's hip bone, nudged him, and then the animal backed off. It seemed to Doug that her long body must be moving backward in sections like a caterpillar. He couldn't see the rest of her, only that tawny head, the amber eyes, moving slowly away from him, leading still. She had not wanted to go back, perhaps, only wanted to see how Doug was doing. Any minute, Doug expected to hear the clawing, scratching sounds of a cougar falling over the edge. Things happened, even to the most expert of animals. And then Charlie disappeared silently from view. 
but when Doug took the last few steps along the ledge, he saw the cougar's tail ahead of him, Charlie having turned herself around again. The path was widening here, on ahead wider still, and finally there were scrub bushes to the left, making a safety rail between him and the canyon below. He'd made it, done it. <laughs>